Stoplet or Dolly Threw a great party We all drank Bacardi It got kinda gnarly We're light as a feather We're tougher than leather Together we're weirder We're weirder together All right, this is exciting. Our guest today is someone who I crossed paths with over the years, many times, more recently got to know a little bit better. And someone who I would say, I've always felt that if I was more traditionally handsome, I would have had a, my career would have been a bit different, you know, and, and this guest really <laughs> has the look that I think would have like, you know, it would have added a couple extra zeros to my income each year. So with that in mind, I, you, I'm sure you all know who it is. <laughs> well, yeah, where is he? Is he coming? <laughs> Nick Thornburn, how are you, mate? I'm good, Ben. Thanks for having me. Do you, you, you know how handsome you are in the rock world, right? <laughs> <laughs> way to, make, way to make you comfortable. From way this... to make you come. Um, oh, <laughs> nice. Fritable. Come for uh, I, I, uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a, that's a hard question to ask. I truly um, don't think about it. Yeah. But you've talked about like, you were aware of having like being a pretty girl and the way that affected your career and career. I mean, you can that, rely, you, know? you can lean, lean, lean on it, but you, you do always look at others and, 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 you know, mm. admire other people's beauty and mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, I mean, for me, I, uh. I li I liked that I that I was, but yeah, I don't know. But Nick, you you didn't have trouble, like you didn't get into music to meet girls. Like you you were okay with girls before that, right? Oh no 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 no! Really, total virgin, terrified of girls, terrified of disease, terrified, just terrified in wow. general. Um, the joke when we started the first band in high school, the band didn't. My partnership with my my um, bandmate in the Unicorns began in high school, but the band sort of formed a f year or two after. But the, we chose the name as like a, a sort of tongue-in-cheek idea that we were trying to attract women. You know, like, what do girls like? Unicorns. And well, it has kind of a sinister... Um, uh, context i guess it, like in hindsight but when we were kids it was like it wasn't sinister at all it was funny we were just trying to like uh we weren't being dead serious about it but the idea was like you know that was like a, a kind of a jokey reference I yeah guess. so your fantasy of a band was not playing to like a grim of sweaty guys moshing or anything like that yeah like yeah unfortunately <laughs> that became the reality <laughs> Did it really? no no i think it's pretty mixed yeah it's a pretty mixed bag but well, that's cool. Yeah. So wait, where did you, you grew up, where in Canada? On Vancouver Island. Oh. Yeah. Dude, I've never been. That's, have nice. you been? No, I've been to Vancouver uh, a bunch, but I've never been to Vancouver Island. It's where, been to where, be beautiful. Yeah, right? I know. That's what, that's what you hear. Yeah, it's like the, it's like the if you add like a, a premium, you know, like, do you want to add any add-ons to your order? Like that's Vancouver Island. Right. It's, it's uh just extra everything it's extra nature and i mean once beauty. i took a ferry from vancouver to get lunch in the afternoon i think that's but that's fancy. not Van famous Van lunch no. destination but in it's vancouver not that's island? not yeah. vancouver you went island. to you took a ferry to victoria maybe that, i don't know it was so long ago and we i just had lunch with my stepdad i don't know um that would have been on vancouver island victoria is the capital city of okay. the province so, on vancouver island. so tourists might do that like for a day you or could do it there's a foot passenger that a ferry that goes from Seattle to. If okay, one was to have an afternoon and some time to have lunch, <laughs> where would you recommend grabbing a boat? Um, <laughs> Your parents' house. I don't my know. parents can cook. I mean, my mom can cook a nice lunch for you. Yeah, because <laughs> Vancouver has great restaurants. Is Vancouver Island, or is it? Is it? Is it isolated? I don't even know. It's much isolated. About it. It's remote and it's long. It's large. So, like, if you think of from LA to San Francisco in terms of length that's oh. how big the island is and was there an uptown and downtown or was there like a nicer part of town and a sort of more wrong side of the track wrong side of the well tracks. there's towns all over the island uh -huh. so there's victoria's at the south end actually even below the the border so it, it's actually like parallel with seattle um and then you go further north i'm pretty far north i'm like three and a half hours 
north of Victoria, four hours north. So it gets fairly rural. And um, I definitely had a difficult time growing up for a certain period where I was trying to express my interests and identity, I guess, in like music and art and drawing. And um, just to go back to like whether I thought I was hot stuff, hot stuff, I did not. <laughs> I was. Uh, bullied kind of mercilessly. Oh, wow. I mean, I think nature and those kind of town, smaller, you know, whatever, towns, cities, whatever, they are nice when kids are little, like if they're nature -y maybe, yeah. but then when you get to a certain age. Like teenagers. It's Twin might. Peaks. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's, it's full firewalk with me. Right. Yeah. yeah, like the first year I was in, um, had moved back, I'd left and gone way further north, uh, almost like kind of by, or Alaska uh, juts down uh, for six years. We, we family moved, but when I moved back um, in the ninth grade or grade nine, as we say, uh, the girl sitting behind me grabbed a garbage bag. I don't know why she had a garbage bag, but when the teacher left, she put it over my uh, neck, around my neck, and choked me. Um, so I definitely wasn't like, yeah, I'm hot stuff. I'm Wait, like, why did she why? do that? I don't know. She didn't like me. Sounds Nobody like liked she's taking out the trash. Or she really yeah. liked you. Yeah. Mm. You know how sometimes when kids are little and they like punch. Yeah. Like when you have a crush. Maybe this wasn't. There. She had a funny way of showing it, but yeah. uh, <laughs> but she she choked me wow. pretty hard. She choked did me she out. Did she get in trouble? No. Did no. that yeah. form any like erotic Kinks. trauma response type thing for you uh, later in life? <laughs> Probably. Well, I like when people are mean to me. You do? That's the kink, yeah. Um, no, I mean... So I mean a lot of guys do. Not. Some of the guys like Maybe. badass girlfriends that kick their butts, sort of. Like, well, yeah. I think I do like being... I do like having someone who is um, not super uh, demure, I guess. So I like mm -hmm. being with a partner who's um, assertive and, uh, you know... Has, has it going on? So if that means grabbing a garbage bag and choking me out, <laughs> so yeah. be it. I'm, What's I'm, up, betas? You know, hey, yeah. we, you know, it's I'm a the, way of life. I'm <laughs> the same. I mean, that that helps helped me in the past because now I don't really need this type of help anymore. But I like also people who sort of have a lot going on. Um, and when I've liked someone and it hasn't worked, yeah, I just think instead of thinking what's wrong with me, I'm not enough, I just think it's so much about dynamics with people. Right. And then you'll see them date someone and maybe they after will date like a an A-type lawyer. Right. Or, you know, uh, a big producer. You're talking about Jimmy Fallon. And Robert Downey yeah, 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 yeah. Jr. <laughs> I mean, well, Robert Downey, I mean, I didn't, we were friends and then we had one sort of date when he was right out of jail, but we were already friends. But I just That's kinda hot too. Yeah, very convict. Very hot. <laughs> yeah. Very See, hot. See, and then she went for an Australian. She yeah. loves convict. Right. But after that when I when yeah, I that... saw who he married, I thought, well, it's not it wasn't just me. It's like he I'm too I'm the more passive one. Right. Mm. You know, I mean I'm sort of the more dreamy one. So you luckily like that. Yeah. So that worked out. So wait, what was the expected path if it wasn't creatively vibrant on Vancouver mm. Island. Like what what path were you sort of expected to take if you'd just stayed and done the kind of status quo thing with your That's high school friends? That's a good friends? job. I mean, a lot of people worked in fisheries. Uh, my dad was a fisheries officer. So uh, it was a, it's a fishing, um, the town I, I, Campbell River is the name of the town where I grew up um, as a fishing town. So, you know, fisheries, logging, it's a big logging town. Um, so these kind of industries. So I guess probably something more, definitely more rugged. One of the last like proper jobs I had was working on a saw, at a sawmill um, where I had to clean these giant logs. I had to take this like horse brush and clean out all the dirt and rocks in the bark before they were um, or after the bark was stripped, clean out all the like stray rocks, and then it would go through this guy's uh, little mini. He had this like kind of boutique sawmill. It was really weird, and I would yeah. And he never knew my name the whole was time. Was the word? Did he describe it as boutique? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, cottage. It was a kind of a yeah. He had a real it's Portlandia vibe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, speaking of a uh, boutique, so how you you seem? I mean, now we're gonna embarrass you again. He says so handsome. I say very stylish. But how did oh, wow. do? When did you start getting into looks? And was it come? Was it well? Obviously, it's not like you 
you didn't have you had television we just mean like culture like when did you start getting like you have you know you the clothes and like did was there um i guess it's like it's not so long ago where you have to go to vancouver and get the like pop like yeah like did you go trips in to go thrift stores (laughs) sometimes record stores yeah but that was like a big trip that was an oasis i remember working I worked at McDonald's and there was like a concert I had, I wanted to go see, but I couldn't get time off work. But this idea of like leaving, um, leaving the town, you'd have to take a two hour bus ride to the ferry, which would be a two hour ferry ride to Van- to like a port that would take a 45 to an hour to get into the city. So it was a big journey to go, but once you got there, yeah, it was like a panoply of of like record stores and like all ages shows, and it was it was a rare treat. But then we would get all ages shows on the island too, like punk bands and oh, hard, wow. hardcore bands, five dollar kind of shows, and that was a huge um, gateway, I think. But also just I had an older have an older sister, uh, which was truly like the the lodestar for me for like style and and just interest in music i mean i would just steal all her cure records and jane's addiction records and stuff and then suddenly like from there her clothes and then yeah from there it would just like i sort of s- stepped out on my own and cool. getting like thrifting and stuff like cool that. and so and then did you play music the whole time like did you learn instruments as a kid no, I didn't okay. play, but I told Alden, my unicorns bandmate who I met in high school, I liked the way he looked. He showed up at school one day and he was wearing like a kilt and uh, or a skirt or something. And That's ha- kind of fucking crazy. Like if you're in a blue collar. Yeah, totally. I mean, community. we would get we would get yeah. attacked by people and and uh, for just for not even anything like that, maybe painting our nails or something. And so he wore this skirt on the first day of school and this shirt that said like share the power and it had like a fist with the 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 female symbol i was like this guy's cool i want to i want to be his friend and so you thought he was talking to you like sharing the power with you <laughs> yeah share yeah, some yeah. of that power with me <laughs> yeah, yeah. but he he was you know I, I knew he was a musician he had a guitar with him and i said we should play sometime and he said do you play music you play and i was like yeah let's let's like jam at your place and so i showed up at his house and i didn't have a guitar because i didn't play i just lied because i wanted to like just get into it somehow and he was he was like oh it's okay you can sing you could be the singer so that was kind of my way into music and wow and like, did you know you could sing or you? no and i couldn't oh my <laughs> so. god this is reminding me of wham the documentary did you watch oh, the i wham did Joker? yeah, yeah. It. it's yeah. Just so so beautiful yeah, yeah like just becoming friends and mm-hmm. then starting a band and yeah i don't know i guess that happens a lot and encouraging each other to yeah, bring up the more it's a dream powerful side. and i could tell that he had something really special and so I knew I was in a good, you know, if I could bring something to the table, I knew we would be, we would, we could actually do something and was young enough and kind of naive and hubristic enough to take it seriously. Wow. Yeah. So he was in, so you good. did unicorns with him, but he's not involved in Ireland. No, right? he, okay. we, we made one record. Uh, we toured it for a year and just imploded and broke up. And then I started Islands. That was the Unicorns, right? But yeah. I thought you did two, you didn't do two records? We did this self-released like CD thing that we'd made, but I don't think of that as like a proper release. Like was, a demo. It was almost of, like yeah, demos. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we would hand them out. And I was just telling someone last night, we would hand them out. Um, we would send them around to promoters and to labels, but put... Uh, our address as the main address and their address is the return address without postage and then put it in the mailbox and then the postman would see it and be like this doesn't have a stamp and send it back to Whoa. to the promoter or this to is the, like a john vanderslice level crime y- hack yeah totally like- <laughs> yeah i was really into those little like anarchist cookbooky oh, crime yes. hacks that's so cool Steal yeah this book so yeah and what about like all because one of i love the what's the name of the pod that you did, that you did with your critical, friend. the critical podcast. I love <clears throat> this podcast that Nick did. It's like um, <laughs> it's almost like a parody podcast of sort of overinflated guys sort of valuing them themselves as thought leaders, kind of exploring. Yeah, is that sort of the yeah, absolutely. Of it? Yeah, like- it's just definitely a satire of these like loser 
influencer um, types, like we played these losers um, who th really think they know everything and have an answer for everything and just are completely delusional. What yeah. if you were like, yeah. it wasn't a satire. <laughs> right, right. It's actually my greatest work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was, but I guess that it, it's sort of, it's a real insight into your, because I think the first time we chatted, we were like two, I was said, we're like two of the only kind of musicians that, there's a bunch, but there's not that many that do stuff with comedians around yeah. town too, you know? Right. So, um, so I guess I'm also interested in the development of this sort of like the comedic side, or it's almost like a, you have a interest in like subversive thought or mm. philosophy or and sort of what the, how you got into all that side of things. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely always wanted to upend the kind of rules. You know, there was an impish streak, I think, from high school, from back in those early days. Like, I remember we had a... Is an impish, is an imp an actual forest creature of some kind? I or? think so. Yeah. Some demonic, but fun demon, okay, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. Playful demon. But yeah, like, just like, I remember, like, we'd have a pie eating contest. And like, I, w I showed up with, everyone sat down and was like, just gorging themselves and I took out a knife and fork in my pocket and like ate it very <laughs> delicately. It was like just to kind of, I don't know, just like play with expectations and sort of subvert. Um, Had you like seen Andy Kaufman or stuff like that? Or was this just from a natural kind of punk it was rock? Kind of a natural, yeah, yeah. I think it was more of just like, you know, what's the what's the um what's the funny way in here? And so I was always I've always tried to play with with the borders of that, I guess. And, and um, yeah, I think there's a playful uh, part of, of that comes through the music too. You know? mm. And yeah. that's like with this record, this new record that yeah. comes out today, the Islands record. Mm. Um, and that's why dolphins lost their legs. Why did dolphins lose their legs? <laughs> I think the idea is that it sucks so much on earth that they hightailed it back to the the ocean. Gotcha. And the, the 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 humor thing is part of the conceptual thrust of this record, right? Life's a joke, all you can do is laugh. Yeah. What's the what was it that sort of pulled these songs together for you? I think it was just this you know, the world is on fire. It's like this kind of nihilistic uh viewpoint, but it's but it's just it's comical at this point. I mean, it's it's sort of a, a laying laying down and and submitting, but um, just seeing how, yeah, how that 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 there's nothing you can do at this point but laugh. It's not necessarily my worldview, but it's a thing I can access that like pessimism. I I would talk about this like daily. I I hope I should probably stop soon because Ben will probably be depressed, but. What do you well, mean? We Just were talking that you about can't, you oh, can't no. do anything. No, 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 no. We were talking about nihilism versus hedonism and how mm. I was saying that they're, I don't know, we're just uh, just sort of, um, well, I don't know, just sort of what choice do you have but to laugh or just try to keep being positive because, you know, what else can you do? Then right. try well, and, to. Or then but, sensual pleasure is. A sol I mean, I think hedonism is sort of like a, one of the possible solutions to nihilism. Right? I guess I was so, saying yeah. that after all the after life, there's all there's like traumas that happened. Mm. You know, I'm whatever growing up in the '80s and having you know whatever gay friends died. Da, da, da. There's like a lot of big traumas, but then the past few years, it's sort of ramped up again, and and then you know you just keep thinking, oh the traumas you mean collectively well yeah just like how am i going to keep going like how do you keep going and attach to life you know with all this stuff but yeah so i really appreciate that because plus i'm looking at the hairstyles and i love to play which one would i have oh, this is on the album cover um which hairstyle would you have yeah i mean i like them all but don't you i mean find, I, I like can i ask you as not all of them i like like five of them i would get <laughs> Can we play well, guess like who? This, sure. This. I like that too. What about a little tight perm? <laughs> if you're just listening to this, uh, you should look up the cover of And That's Why Dolphins Lost Their Legs to see what Nick and I are It's a great to. But, cover. But don't you guys Thank find you. like with, say, psychedelics or something that you can get into certain philosophical headspaces where despite all of the 
signs that are so terrible. Mm. There is some ineffable reason to stay hopeful. I don't know what that is, but I, I return to that. Like, and I'm thinking of like when I take psychedelics or when I yeah. get lost in music mm -hmm. that I feel like I can't explain it, but like mm -hmm. against all odds, there is like some hope in me. Yeah. And there has to be, there has to, to otherwise be. you wouldn't be bothered making a record. For sure. Right? For yeah. sure. It's, it's a, a release valve and it's like being able to access that feeling and almost contain it, like cage it a little bit, but know that, like you said, that there is beauty in the world and there's there's love and there's hope and there's there there are things hopefully that people find worth living for and and it's okay to have an outlet for those darker feelings and darker impulses but to to organize them in a way that it doesn't overwhelm you i think mm. so yeah i wanted to ask like you that. about the picture on the inside. Yeah. Um, so this picture, Ioni, Nick was telling me, is of uh, Nick set up some motion capture cameras <laughs> yeah. for when he was sleeping because he had night terrors. Oh. And he wanted to see the evidence of it. So, what, yeah, what? how long have you been having both, night terrors Both for? my kids had them. And I, like, it was one of those lessons where I had a friend, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I had a friend who had kids before me and her kid had a night, night terrors. And I thought, I was so judgmental. And I've noticed this, especially with parenting. The minute you sort of judge, I was thinking, of mm -hmm. course her kids do, because she's nuts, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And then cut to both my kids mm -hmm. did. But anytime I've judged a parent, when their kids oh yeah are, you'll get worse you your kid you know that's like, a good advice to people yeah, having like, kids is uh, don't judge any that other sounds kids. karmic yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean but um but they were they stopped after teen because usually you typically yeah. it goes away but you had it your whole life i had it as a kid i had them as as a kid uh vivid dreams and then very like waking nightmares and um with sleepwalking and all that stuff, somnambulism. And then it went away for a long stretch. And then actually I was staying in this, I was renting this friend's apartment in Munch, uh, in LA in like 2010 before I fully moved here. Binky was her name. And she lived in the- Binky Shapiro. Yes. yes. There's and only she, one Binky in the True, <laughs> that's true. I haven't seen Binky in many, many years, but I stayed in her very beautiful old building. I think it was- it's near, if it's not the Gaylord Apartments, it's like on that street on Wilshire. It's like this mm -hmm. beautiful old building. She took me in and showed me around and um, uh, the super had come by and was, or the, the building manager or something had come by and was like talking to her. And then he was like, do you guys want to see the, the upstairs? There's like this beautiful uh, penthouse apartment where I guess William Randolph Hearst used to have his like, his like trysts or whatever he would have oh, yeah. his, his uh, affairs in this place and so it was this like really historic building that had the, all of this charm and character to it and then he mentioned that the super who lived right above binky died uh like the night before or something and in the building and i don't believe in ghosts or anything but that was that night the first night that i stayed there i woke up and I felt like there was just someone in the in the apartment. I just had that, and I hadn't had this feeling before. Like maybe as a kid or something, I had these like night terrors, but I had this deep feeling that someone had just been looking at me, sta standing over me, and then had left the room. And I went to open the bedroom door to look down out into the hallway to see if anyone was there. And when I p opened the door or tried to open the bedroom door, it was locked. And it had this little latch under the doorknob that I didn't even know was there. So it was this weird thing where I was like, how did this door get locked? And and what's happening? Because this is like a new thing that I haven't had these kinds of disturbances in my sleep since I was a kid. So I like left the door open in my like weird, hazy brain. It was like, I need to keep the pathway clear. Whatever was like visiting me needed the door to be opened or something it was spooky now you say you don't believe in ghosts, i know but this i know this story does sound like you're well, attributing could... your uh, night terrors to some I know supernatural it, I, know. That one. I mean it's either ghosts or it's just that you're you our, ima our imaginations are so um you know can be so real yeah that you kind of it it sort of 
you know, un- I th- opened up something. So either I, I think it's most likely that it's just it just was weird because then it started to happen, and now it happens in my where I live now in Los Feliz every night. Basically, Whoa. it's exhausting. And what do you do? Like, what did you see on camera? Where this, you know, this picture? Um, what it came from a video? Like, what did you see yourself doing? Well, the. It's always changing, but it's like I, I, it's usually a feeling that there's something um, in the room or something in the apart in my apartment or under the bed or in the bed. It was like getting closer to me. It was having this weird. It was almost like a narrative, like a a, a seasonal arc of a show or something, where it's like it was in the building, it was in the building, and it was is in the hallway, and then it was in my room, and then I was like, it's getting closer to me, and then I woke up one. N- night and my hand was like this i was like it's in my whatever this thing is i know again i don't it sounds like i believe in in demonic entities but i i felt like this thing was coming in into my how do you fall asleep at night are you scared to go to bed yeah i've started i have a little routine that actually does help with a sleep mask and i leave a light on so i have darkness but i have a light on so if it falls off in the middle of the night i can um, I can see clearly because I, it is an imagination thing where I have like that pareidolia sort of deal where I see faces and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, Wait, and what is that? Pareidolia? I, I it's like a that. word for like seeing faces and things. Oh, like, I just have faces, that. Though. I have that a little bit. I have that a little bit. Yeah. And like the classic one would be a tree okay. trunk. Mm-hmm. Like you can see them a lot or ceilings. Okay. Like you know, Here these, these and, cameras, and that's a psychological. That's a I disorder. think it's early onset Alzheimer's. Actually, really? I've heard. Oh yeah. my god, this is becoming a terrifying episode. <laughs> I hate it. I hate this. Well, you said weirder together, so. <laughs> but I have trying. it ever since I was little. The well, look, then that's seeing, very early onset. Seeing yeah. faces, it's, ba- like, it's baked in. Yeah. There's no escaping. I'm an it. artist, yeah. so I see. No, I think. Well, look, mental illness and creativity i think are linked so do you feel like do yeah. you have mental illness do you feel like uh no and no. i don't no. mean to make no. light no, of no, that no, 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 i know what you mean i mean like, no, people i, do I feel think what have, you mean but, is yeah. just that yeah that artists are sensitive and they have yeah sometimes yeah. minds that are different yeah we're well, non-neurotypical to some degree i think yeah, yeah. it's like a, i think i'm sensitive hyper sensitive do you yeah. attribute any of the songwriting to these demons uh, one of them gets, has writing credit okay. on uh-huh. the last song, yeah. <laughs> one of her lovers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she, Cole, took, she rigged me over the coal. She had a good lawyer. But Cole, our kids' uh, ones, like, she didn't wouldn't remember them the next day. I don't remember. Yeah, so that's partially why I set up the camera, too, yeah. because right. I was like. But for us, it was so much work because you're just like. You hear the screaming. Well, you could, Well, she would just come in and be eyes wide awake completely Mm -hmm. having Mm -hmm. a whole scene going on and then we would take turn all the lights on or take her outside or do all that looking around proving there's no boogeyman anywhere but she like it never changed it you know she would always say everything's moving too fast it's moving too fast slow it down slow it down i've had that i've had that as a kid i had that where things would speed up the the room would kind of pull away and- it's yeah like when you oh, i guess i would have that at a high high fever you get that a little bit but yeah but then yeah, and you can't really help and then you can't it's not like a regular dream where you could a regular night where you could turn on the lights and put on a disney movie and feel better yeah you still even in your waking reality it still feels like there's something wrong and that's the weird thing when you it's like i know who i am i know where i am but my wall is falling over. Right. It's like I am fully lucid, but that wall I need to, and I like, I, I find myself, wa- I'm awake and I'm pushing on the wall. And then a few seconds later, I'm like, whoa, this is insane. I'm dreaming. I have to go back to bed. And then I go right back to bed. Wow. Well, that's good. You can sleep at least. Do you, do you <laughs> yeah. feel that, do you feel that Sonics and, cause I always like your production and oh, stuff. Thanks. Like I think you have interesting you're doing interesting things with frequencies and mm. you know and it's not not to say it's like so avant-garde but it just mm. like it's considered mm. and you always create like an interesting palette to me i always think of sonics as sort of um i think of them as sort of supernatural because they sort mm. of create the sounds sort of create portals to again not supernatural but other types of experiences i don't know i how do you what is it that 
helps you shape the sonic palette of something that you're working on. Whoa, uh, that's pretty mystical. That's a pretty supernatural question. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel about sound, though. I feel like that's it's cool. sort of like, even though if it's just, I don't know, like the things to do with like the way drums sound and rhythms yeah. and harsh frequencies and sub basses, and they mm. do things to your body. Yeah. You know what I mean? They do yeah. things to your mind. Mm -hmm. and I, I, because you seem to have a vision mm. sonically, is it, or is it more just like, referencing things from the past that you've liked or yeah no i i don't mean to be coy but i do think the way i approach everything in life really but especially like creative stuff is kind of impulsive and intuitive and just kind of feeling based and that really stems from the beginning in that moment in high school when uh i just sort of faked it to get in and then it was just about taste and about instinct. And so I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a th theoretical background. I don't have um, chops per se, um, but I just, I know when it feels good and then I follow that. Mm. I relate to that yeah. Yeah. as a painter and an actor. I, I have, I'm sure you do obviously, like I'm fans of other painters and yeah. I get inspired and I'm yeah, sure it's the same, but I'm not, uh, you know, I've gone to done a few classes and I've done a bit of theater and mm. acting classes and painting classes, but it's really more, you know, kind of following what I like and what I want to do. And yeah. I think that's the way. And I don't think it's, yeah, I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm this, um, isolated, like mad genius the stuff trickles down the influences and you absorb it in kind of like osmosis or something but i i don't set out i don't have like an agenda i let it i'm sort of let it happen um and maybe that's the same with you i don't know but just kind of let it guide almost like um automatic writing or something mm. where you just allow the work to happen and when it feels good you follow that um and so with things like the danceability of the music, because this record I feel like is quite danceable mm. in a way, like that was not an intention. It's just the songs came out. I don't know. I mean, look, to be honest, I think there was a period, I took a long break from music because I was feeling really burnt out and, um, you know, just feeling like it was not the ma I was losing the magic. Um, and so I took this long break, but then I started, I was like, oh, I kind of want to do like rap production stuff. Like I really like, there's certain things I want to really try, like um, just to access and see what it feels like to try to make like uh, a Neptune's beat or something, you know? And so I, I started making just little rap instrumentals. And, um, and then from there, I was like, oh, I'll just sing a, maybe I'll just sing the hook here. And I was like, oh, I'll just write this verse. And so like one of the songs, uh, Pelican, was was a good example of that, where it was just really like, initially I wanted it to be uh, an instrumental. And then I just started to keep writing. I just kept writing. I didn't have any restraint, I guess. And so there was, there was a idea of what it would be. And then from there, it just sort of evolved. And I was like, well, this set of songs have the same kind of um, vocabulary or I've had that sometimes where you you take the pressure off writing for yourself or for your project yeah. and suddenly it opens up parts right. of your creativity or personality that you wouldn't normally give permission to because it doesn't like fit whatever you perceive as what you're meant to be doing and it can be it can open up quite interesting avenues totally yeah, yeah. totally yeah it's another way in yes um, and I wasn't like intentionally trying to do that I think I just yeah, it sort of felt like I'd, I was out of gas a little bit in 2016. I released a couple records on at once as like a double thing. And I was like, I don't know where to go from here. And I don't know if I have anything to say. And I think it's good to not force it and be intentional. And if I didn't, yeah, I didn't have much to contribute. So I was like, I'm just going to take my foot off the gas and, and hang out, um, try other things. Cool. So, and you're putting it out yourself? This yeah. Have you put out other records yourself? Yeah, I, I, in 2016, I had a little imprint through Red Eye, uh, and that's what this is too. And so they're just a great 
distributor based in North Carolina that handle a lot of cool labels. And so I sort of created, again, a little, not unlike the boutique sawmill, a little boutique label. So I can just put out my own stuff and it's um, it's kind of feels like the way, I mean, you you do that yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it sort of feels now like, look, if you're lucky enough to have someone who wants to throw money at something for some reason, yeah. that's great. But the economics of putting out a, a single album are that you're going to lose money on, yeah. basically. Yeah. So it, it feels like keeping those costs manageable and yeah. being realistic about what you expect, especially if you want a long career. It's You're not thinking of every record as, this is the one that's going to break through. It's right. more like leaving behind a catalog of work that yeah. you feel proud of. Yeah, it's a canvas. It's like a tapestry or whatever. Yeah. It's like, this is the... This is my work. And I was actually just talking about that with my friend Tom Sharpling this morning, who you know, right? Um, but it's just like, I think we both have this feeling. I don't want to speak for him, but is that like you do, we're planting these things that I, I, hopefully, if you're lucky, outlive you. But um, but it almost feels like you have to be dead for people to appreciate it. Because I, I, I think Tom's as well, like is very consistent and very... Uh, a lot of he releases a lot of material with his with his radio show and with me it's like i've i've never gone away really even when i sort of went away i'm like still putting out stuff and so i, I don't think it gives people a chance to miss you you know and when they when they don't miss you they they can kind of take you for granted and not to sound like sour grapes or anything but i do think it's a situation where sometimes you leave the work behind and then you get to appreciate, you see the scope of it. Did you hear that? Nick is saying he feels taken for granted and he plans to end his life very soon. So I do. finally Shortly his body after, of work will be appreciated. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> the only, yeah, the downside is that I wouldn't be able to collect all those sweet royalties. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> so wait, you headed on tour? September 12th. September 12th, day yep. after my birthday. Day after your birthday. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, but yes, but, uh, but but you're anyway. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. a party too. That's right. Yeah. Different date. That's right. right. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's cool. I yeah. waited. I wanted to wait <laughs> for your birthday before I left town. And you're going respectfully. Out full band? Um full band uh, it's changed a little bit. The lineup's actually changed for this tour. It's gonna be weird and insane. And definitely people are not gonna wanna miss it. It's gonna be uh it's going to be different. Awesome. Very, very different. I would recommend if you're on the fence about coming to see us that you come to see us. All right. I'm going to put the link to that in the to tickets in the um, the show notes. And and this record is out today. And it's, it's oh, I knocked a camera. And it's a beautiful record we were listening to in the car yesterday and just loved it. So um, thanks, Ben. Congrats, man. Thank you. And thank you for just keep, you know, I feel like you're one of those people that I always just peripherally I'm aware of just always doing interesting things. And I mm. personally gain a lot of just courage to just continue doing my own interesting things when awesome. I see my peers just, yeah, just not stopping, you know, and always kind of trying new stuff. And so it's really cool. Well, that's heartening to hear. And I feel the same. And I think it's really important for there to be a community and to be a kind of, you know, it's so easy in this business to be sort of feel isolated from everyone else. There's like a competitive thing and then there's just this fragmented thing. So I think that's really important that we can uh, be inspired by each other and just be be friends and, and connect like that. And hey, there's a lot of room in the middle. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't know about the top, but we, we only need to be in the middle. Sure. We'd be happy then. There's, there's a lot of room in the yeah, middle. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll gladly take it. Cool. Right on. Well, our audience are affectionately known as the beautiful babies. So uh, you want to say goodbye to them? <laughs> goodbye, beautiful babies. <laughs> <laughs> together we're weirder, we're weirder together.